What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Homebrew. We are here. We're going to chat up uh, about some homebrew, hopefully, at some point. No, I was, yeah, I was dumb. I'm not even going to say that. I was Might stupid. talk to a homebrewer. I know we will. So, like, why we would will. I say Mike? Because yeah. I'm just unprepared. Let me start over. Okay. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Homebrew. We are here for another round of Talking Beer, and it's going to be a good show. We are going to have our old friend Dimitri back on the show. He just passed his beer judge uh, certification program or something like that, or we're going to find out. I forget now. Um, but we last spoke with him. He was studying with Cooper. So yeah. if he didn't pass or did poorly, it's Cooper's fault. I, I like to give people pointers that, yeah, I don't know. I It's... It's one of my things. I like to help people try to pass. Sure, they, yeah. You're the Mother if, Teresa of beer judges. If they try, that you know, yeah. If yeah, you build it, they will pass. Yeah, um, exactly. So we're going to chat with him, and uh, that'll be cool. It'll be on the second segment. But for now, our first beer we're going to try. And, you know, we've we've uh, sort of uh, praised, we've glazed uh, the, uh, the non-alcoholic beer segment as of late, the past year or so. Um, you know, I don't know. This is what you do, man. I mean, I'm 46. I don't really feel no. like drinking beer. There's been many times this year, you guys, I'm just going to be straight that, uh, I've thought about just not drinking, just stopping drinking. Cause I don't like like nine times out of 10. I don't like the way I feel when I'm drinking. I don't like it. I'd have like two beers no. and I feel like yucky. Yeah. I came back from uh Northern California homebrewers fast. And you know, there's a lot of tastes to go on there. It's, it's an exercise in pacing. You just, you can't try everything, yeah. but it goes in late into the night, you know, and come back from that. It's like, yeah, I've been very light this week. I come back. Oh, maybe I'll have a beer. Ah, okay. And I was like, <laughs> okay. The next night, no beer. It, it's yeah. Don't, don't yeah, eat it. I don't know what it is. Like I'll, sometimes I will have a beer or a glass of wine or something like that. And I'll have a headache within like five minutes. And I don't know if it's Whoa. psychosomatic or, or, or not, or like the other night, I was like, I really want a beer. I'm like, int I'm, I'm jazzed for having a beer. So I pulled out, of course, pulled out a celebration because it's been a while. I'm like, oh, let's try it. Let's check in on the celebration cans and see how they're holding up. Of course, immaculate. Perfect. Yeah, I loved yeah, it. Of course. But like 20, 15 minutes later, I was like, oh, I don't know. I just feel clammy. I don't, li I don't, <laughs> I don't like how I feel about it. I'm disappointed. I'm conflicted now. I don't know what clammy? to do. You were feeling literally sweaty and cold? Not cold, the clammy, a little clammy, like not really, but kind of. I just didn't feel. I don't know how to describe okay. it. It wasn't like. Uh, no, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. You know, I've I drink a hell of a lot less than I did several years ago, but like I I just don't like, I, I don't like being real. I don't like being real drunk. It's it's not that fun. Yeah. I don't like how I feel the next day. It's not super fun when you can't remember stuff. <clears throat> and I've just I've cut way back. You know, it's not like I need extra pounds. You know, I've got plenty of all <laughs> plenty of them already. So it's not that beer is bad, but you know, when I start brewing again, I'm going to be doing like the three gallon batches and, and I, I keep talking about starting to brew again. I'm going to start doing this, but I'm going to be doing, you know, two, three <laughs> gallon batches because I don't want to face down like a five gallon keg and just be every night like, Oh God, I better, I better make a dent in this or it's never going <laughs> to go away. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. So. That's where the state of things are. Like we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, the anyway, fun, the fun part of it is for me is sharing my beer. So I'll brew yeah. five gallons of something, but I'll pour half of it at a festival and you know maybe drink a little bit myself. But it's uh, yeah, I blew a whole like three gallon keg of IPA at the at NCHF and it was fun. Nice. <laughs> fun awesome. to share, taste a little bit of it with somebody yeah. that wants it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that, that uh, was a long way to say our first beer we're going to be drinking is a non-alcoholic Oktoberfest from our friends at, at, at Athletic Brewing. Jeez, Louise. And it's been a while since I've had an Athletic beer. I had an Athletic Light I found at the store the other day, but I haven't been mail ordering them. I just, uh, just kind of like lost touch with that, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, probably because I've just been drinking the Sierra Nevada Trail Pass for so long. So yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to have a, uh, an athletic that you can't really get too many places. What's interesting to me about this beer and I haven't tasted it yet, but uh, I've, I'm curious to have one of these because last time we had the non-alcoholic wine Stefan wine Stefan, I forget. Yeah. Best beer. And those are, those were good. I would love to try a non-alcoholic version of it because it's, it's gotta be, uh, very tough, you know, as, as tough as non-alcoholic beers are to, to brew in general, I feel like these are so delicate yet bold 
I don't know how you're going to get that flavor and that that profile, um, you know, with no alcohol. So I'm I'm curious, Shar, you found these at the store, right? You found these in the I, wild. I did when I was getting some uh, beers for the last show, some Oktoberfest. Yeah. I happened to find this at you know Total Wine or Bevmo or something Total Wine, and I thought, you know, this will be an interesting thing to try. And I just wasn't able to get you know, the just because of whatever is happening with transportation or whatever, I wasn't able to get these to you guys or. I forget what happened, but was able to get them to you for this show. And that yeah. is something good for us to talk about here. It's like the end of September, which it's always yeah. funny to me as an American. This is when Oktoberfest starts is September. <laughs> Wouldn't it be like Septemberfest? But you no, know, they're Germans. No, it, 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 this is, it, this, it is not done. This is, we, we do not call it Septemberfest. It is Oktoberfest. Right. It's probably right. more of a Russian accent there. Sorry about that. Yeah, look, you know, Eastern I shouldn't block. do accents. Good, I really dude. shouldn't do that. It's all good. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, what do you think, Cooper? You start off. T tell us about, tell us your well, thoughts on this beer because. Uh... It's it's nice when you, when you do get a, a a beer that's brewed for the season. It's not just any athletic beer that might've been on the shelf for six months. And you know, yeah. this one, you know, <laughs> they brewed it for the season and it's, yes. it's going to be in the freshness range of, of, you know, acceptable. So at first I got a, you know, kind of a, a wordy note in it, you know, just like a little bit of unfermented wort. But there's a nice toasty maltiness in there alongside that. Not getting very much hop. They do say, so it is brewed with, you know, hops, malt, water, and yeasts, which they do use yeast. And it's one of the ones that's a 0 0.5 or less. So it's, it is brewed, um, you know, NA beer. It's not a mixture of some sort or a, something with all the alcohol filtered out or whatever they do. But yeah, well, we talked about that before. Like, anyway, um, I haven't tasted it yet. It seems like a little cold. I just took it out of the fridge. I'm kind of trying to let it warm up. And um, have you had one of them yet, Brian? Have you tasted one? I, I did. I can I can go first if you want. I pulled mine out of the fridge probably a half an hour ago, and I should have let it go a little bit longer. I'm I will lead off my. I'm a little stuffed up because I had my COVID and flu vaccines yesterday, and my body is still my immune system is you know it's strong. It, I was kind of messed up for a day but I'm still a little stuffed up. The, I'm not getting a ton of aroma, but I really like the flavor. The flavor is, you know, the malt is spot on, I think. You know, it's it's got some Munich type malt in there, some dark, clearly some darker malt. A little bit maybe on the grainy side, but I like that. It's not wordy. It's, you know, the grain I think is very prominent. The uh, if you go to the website for Athletic, they talk about a uh, clean malt backbone from Vienna and Munich malts. Hollertau middle fruit hops add light bitterness to complement the bready aromatics and slightly sweet body. And I would say that it's fair to call this bready, not yeah. bready, but bready. But that's yeah. you know, I think the best examples of this kind of have a, a bread like character. I, I'd, prefer bread, a, yeah. I, I'd prefer a little more. A little more hot bitterness. They talk about how it's lightly bitter, and they've clearly gone for a malt focus rather than a hop focus. You know, the guidelines for a lot of German beers talk about firm bitterness, uh, and that you know, essentially what that means is they're you're going to get some hot bitterness there. It's not an IPA, but you're going to get some bitterness. You know, I, I like the malt character in this a lot, but I'd like a little more bitterness behind this. Yeah. I so agree. I got, yeah. Getting yeah. to the flavor, it does have, um, you know, a lot more of uh, the Munich E, Vienna E kind of malt yeah. uh, flavor in it. Not so much toast, but like kind of bread, bready and bread crusts. Mm -hmm. And it's very richly malty. I agree that the, you know, the hop is kind of lacking. The hop is mentioned. I'm not yeah. getting much in the nose at all. Maybe a slight herbal, but in the yeah. flavor, the bitterness is kind of just backgroundy. And you know, backing up, you know, and I jumped right into the flavor. You know, for appearance, you know, this has a this is a big head that lasts a long time. I mean, I can tell yours. I poured mine, I think, a little bit earlier, uh, Coop. And my looking at the bubbles on my glass, I did a terrible job washing dishes when I washed this this glass. <laughs> I got to be a little bit better on that. Uh, but I think the head was great. You know, it's clear. You know, the color is what you expect from an Oktoberfest. It is kind of that golden. I guess you get a few little well, floaties in here. It's clear adjacent. <laughs> yeah. It's not, 
There's right. a definite uh, enough of a haze that I can't see through to the screen very clearly yeah. at all. It's... Yeah, there is. It is maybe a little bit less clear than you might like for this style. I'm drinking it out more of a, a tulip, you know, kind of glass here. Yeah. It's the it's a little bigger bowl on the bottoms, but uh, yeah, you can see. I can see my finger at the bottom of the glass, but I can't yeah. really see through the, the width of yeah. it here. There's right. a little little haze, but that's all right. But not in a, not in a fest beer, JP. <laughs> if you went to Germany well, or no, I mean for for me to style, <laughs> yeah. no. But for sure. I, you know, I don't know. I I, I give I give non alcoholic beers a lot of grace. I give them yeah. a lot of room for error yeah. because they're doing extra steps and they're making something that mm-hmm. I value. So I'm 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 okay with a couple minor flaws, like you know. Right. That. And on, on a score sheet, appearance is three points. So, you know, right. if it's the right color, I'll give it a point. If it's got a good, nice yeah. head, I'll give it a point. If it's a little hazy, I might take away a point, you know, if it's not supposed to be. But yeah. Yeah. So it, that's just, one it's, point. It's not everything. And go, whoa, what's a, what's whoa. a JP? Is, like, what the hell, dude? Oh uh, man, what's going on here? Let's see. I don't know. That's that's weird. <laughs> the um yeah, it was like cached. I'm trying to like fix my video because it like flickers. Yeah. yeah. So I went from my real face cam to my virtual, which is <laughs> uh, I don't know, and I don't know. I guess like last time I was doing something in here, I setting up a, a stream. I had my shirt off. So yeah. there you go. That's you guys hilarious. got a little thrill. Yeah. But this this there's a lot of good things about this beer. It's not like the only good line in Ghostbusters 2 where the, the art uh, museum guy says, Everything you're doing is bad. I want you to know this. No, it's it's oddly it's oddly off clear. Yeah. But aside from that, you know, I'd like I'd like a little more aroma and a little more hot bitterness. Having said that, the fact that it's got a a, a big head that sticks around for a while and it's got a good you know, a noticeable Munich, you know, Vienna character to it and that kind of breadiness. I, I really like that. You know, I, we each have two cans. Uh, we're not going to drink two on the show. No. Although it's not going to get a smash. They have two NA beers. But I will have that other can. I'm not going to just pour that other can out. It's, I'll, I'll and be it's, drinking that. It's only 70 calories. So you yeah. can sip, a, you know, two of these for, you know, one regular light beer kind of. Exactly. I, and oddly though, lunch yeah. If I went to. Despite the the low calories, um, I wanted to talk about the finish and the the mouthfeel a little bit. It does yeah. seem to have a little backgroundy sweetness where I I would like a fest beer to be a little bit drier and have the toastiness kind of give that background. You know, it dries off your tongue and then you're left with the the toasty malt. Yeah, yeah. this kind of lingers on the tongue a little more, and it's got a little bit fuller mouthfeel than I would expect for a fest beer. It's a little bit a slower drinker and a fest beer is designed to be served in a liter Mosstein and you can, you know, drink it about as fast as you'd like to. You don't have to pound it or anything, but you know, <laughs> you, if you, if you don't drink those Mosssteins, uh, the Moss Krug uh, fast enough, it, you end up with just a big pool of warm beer at the bottom that you don't want to yeah. drink. So uh, this would be hard to, to get through in a, a yeah. You know, a Moss Krug, but it's um, very passable as a half pint here and, and very enjoyable, very malty and got enough richness to keep it interesting. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. think, you know, they, on, on the athletic uh, uh, webpage for this beer, they mentioned it has a slightly sweet body, which I think is maybe an attempt to get out in front of the fact that it's a little bit sweeter than you might want it to be. It is. Well, yeah, that was my that's my note is that it's it, it's it can't it's not candy like, but it is too sweet for me to because these in my mind, these are crisp. They finish yes. crisp. You know, there's a there's a bitterness to it, but this doesn't have those things. And that's what I think enables you to, to drink this a lot, mm-hmm. you know, to drink a, a mass quantities of it. And I don't know that I could do that with this beer. I wonder if they designed it with a little sweetness um, on purpose to give it a little something besides the alcohol to, you know, like alcohol can yeah. come across as being a little sweet at times. Yeah. Uh, gives you a little zing on your tongue. It's a different mouthfeel. Yeah. But um, yeah, at the same time, like Heineken zero zero, I just had one of those and it dries off perfectly, you know, and you don't really miss the alcohol. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I'm putting this beer in with uh, basically just the other non-alcoholic beers that we've had where um, 
this one specifically, I guess, is really good. If you're if you're going to be drinking, you know, fest beers or whatever, and you know they're kind of you know higher alcohol, I guess, um, on the higher end. If you're like me, and you could you could space them out with this beer and not miss a beat. Yeah, or blend them. <laughs> yeah, or blend them, sure. But like, you know what I mean? You can have a couple, you can have like one of the Firestone ones or one of the Sierra Nevada ones and then have one of these, you know, yeah. and, and you're, yeah. you're still, you're still in the vibe. And that's yeah. what I think a, 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 the majority of non-alcoholic beers are. Um, yeah. And this one I think fits perfectly. It doesn't stick out. And I think it's a very passable attempt. What would you give yeah. it? If you got this in a competition, what would you give it? Fest beer. Go. Give me a quick, give me a quick score. What do you think? I would go 32. I, yeah, probably 31, 32. Yeah, I was thinking 30. Look at us, man. Not just See, we don't need to fill you guys out sheets. 32 and 31. We don't need to <laughs> fill out sheets. We just, we just, you know, the hive mind comes together. Yeah. It's like, uh, JP, think back like 15 years to the session where you played Guess My Number, and that was like a 45-minute segment. Oh, my <laughs> God. That was one of the best things I've ever heard on, on podcasting. Yeah, well. Get what? Guess My Number. It's between 1 and 500. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, so, yeah. all good things coming to end. But look at that head. That's pretty good. It's it really good. good. It's not bad. And the, uh, the normal yeah, the fest beer is normally five eight to six three. It's not super strong, but it's it's firmer than a run of the mill lager. See, for me that yeah, I mean, and I know we're on different scales. Like for me, that's like oh no. Like I was at uh, mm-hmm. a brewery up north um a couple of weeks ago and they had a pale ale at like six one. I'm like, I don't know, man. Come on. Don't make me fucking drink this. Or they had a, a an English mild uh at uh, like five eight. I'm like, come on, guy. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Oh, this is not happening. But uh, yeah. You know, but- they're not brewing it for me. They're brewing it for most people. And they they I, I think you're if you're a, a run of the mill general craft beer enjoyer. And you see a beer like at four percent, you're gonna go like, "What is? Well, I'm a light beer. What's what is the this? point? You know yeah. I mean? yeah. So, well, my my I IPA that I I brought to the the camping, you know, the beer camp fest, the Northern California Homebrews Festival, that was only six three, and I I missed my gravity a little bit. I was going for stronger, but I was like, you know what? That's nice. It's a good sipper. We're pouring little bits of beer for everybody. I would never. It's like it's on the, you know. It, if 10 15 years ago that was perfectly fine but these days you don't see anything below six five hardly six eight you know on IPA. You're retro yeah <laughs> yeah that to me is that to me is wild that how beer has sort of like i don't know started at a higher alcohol level and at least in america and then stayed there right. if not pushed the boundaries where i feel like in europe it's just kind of like you know where all these styles are kind of from or based on is not that way and we're just yeah. like oh yeah you know let's have two or three and get wasted let's Please. drift yeah and drift. then drive with all our kids Ooh. unbuckled in the seats oh um, yeah all right well what do you think are we done with this beer we wrap it up 71 yeah uh, yeah I, I like it it was it was worthwhile i hope you guys think it was a worthwhile segment to discuss of course yeah and it's a good like, I would i would definitely you know if i were you know, having some Oktoberfest uh, get together, I'd have a few, oh, I'd put a few, a couple of six packs of these for yeah, people man. to have. Like you're saying, you you have a Polliner and you have one of these, and you have a Weinstefa and you have one of these. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah, I'm all right with that. And you know what? It's it, as it's warming up on my desk a little bit because it is 80 degrees in the studio today. Um, oh God! Still at this moment at 7:58 p.m. It, there's a little lemony character. That's kind of pleasant, but it, it I think it kind of shifts it out of the fest beer category for me and into something wholly different that I don't know what it is. Maybe like a really malty. No, no I'm not even going to say that because that's not true. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. It's I think it's an interesting beer. If you know it's a fest beer and you're open and accepting of non-alcoholic beers, you're going to go, this is great. Mm-hmm. It's it's characterful and it's more way more interesting to, to drink than a Klaus Taller. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure, man. All right, let's take a quick break, everybody. We're done with this beer. We've beaten the alcoholic, non-alcoholic segment to death, I think, uh, for this show. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to be chatting a homebrew. We're going to chat in BJCP score sheets and how to level up your scoring game. So hang on, everyone. It's Dr. Homebrew. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for sticking around, everybody. We are back with our friend Dimitri, who uh, last time we talked either uh, was studying for the BJCP exam or had already taken it. 
and uh, we're 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 a little unclear. There's a heated battle uh, in between in between the break as to as to where we left off, but it doesn't really matter because Dimitri has finally gotten his results back. So we invited him along to come on and talk a little bit about those results, about his BJCP test experience, and to give a grade to Brian Cooper for how good of a judge uh, trainer he was and uh, how good of a judge he is pretty much morally as well as yeah. literally. Yeah. So the Dimitri, coaching, welcome back, his aroma, man. is it impeccable? Does it leave something to be desired? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need to know a lot about that before, before we get started though, Dimitri, I have a question to ask you that I ask pretty much all the guests. Are you in a homebrew club? Yes, I am. Shout out to the Bay area mashers. In oh, Alameda. Bam. You yes. gotta love Bam. Mm -hmm. cool. Great club. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, Demetri. So last time we chatted, um, you hadn't gotten your results back from your test. I don't think so. Okay. But um, it's been it's been a long four months. It's been four months. Okay. That was yeah. my first question is how long did it take? So four months, that's it. Yeah, that's a long time. But also that's kind of average. I don't think I got my score back for a while. I can't really mm -hmm. remember. I think it was that's a, a lot shorter time. than the historical average. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So BJCP is doing a lot better than they used yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. That's old timers. You know what I mean? When I took my test before you were born. <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I, I get it. Like, it's all like voluntary. Make it on paper. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So how was your test experience uh, going into that? Let me let me know a little bit about that in case anybody has some first time jitters or, uh, you know, maybe they're uh, too afraid to go. Uh -huh. What was your experience like? Well, test test day, I mean, couldn't help but like, you know, feel nervous. I mean, it felt like any other tests I was prepping for, which was kind of funny because, you know, like it's it's a test on like, you know, drinking beer and stuff. And it, it was funny when I was chatting like with the some of the guys at the table, you know, they were like, you know, I usually have the beer after the test. So it was like, <laughs> it is really, uh, it, it was a cool experience. It's, it's a, like a high end frat, uh, initiation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we boy. took it at, uh, someone's living room. And so it was just oh, a bunch oh, of wow. like, uh, homebrewers like, yeah. Yeah. And you guys have been prepping for some time. So I remember it was in like January, I believe I, I gave, um, uh, an exam tips kind of a class and uh, you know we're talking yeah. about ju judging and semantics and some you know some tips for writing a good score sheet how to fill it out completely and all of that mm -hmm. and from there i remember that you gave me a a ton of score sheets and like <laughs> yeah i like i Thanks graded again. a few of them but i paged through all of these i'm like this kid is writing a lot <laughs> he's like you know there was no, some no wonder you took an interest that's what you do yeah, well, there were some things that... under my wing because he and I both, uh, you know, overdo right. our score sheets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. That's what it was. No, but he was doing a lot of things right. But at the same time, I could see that mm -hmm. there were some a few things that needed a little bit of, uh, you know, coaching that are like maybe pet peeves for graders, like you know, yeah, putting comments in the wrong sections and this mm -hmm. and that. If you're just comment on mouthfeel and the flavor, or this or yeah. that, so, you know, just simple things where, or, you know, coming completely forgetting to do, uh -huh. you know, uh, the, the finish of the beer or the aftertaste and just not commenting on that. will lose your points. You can get better completeness. If you just com comment on everything asked for mm -hmm. and the other things and just like kind of broaden yeah. what you can write about. He could obviously write a lot. Yeah, um, stick you know, figures yeah. having sex in the margins, <laughs> but also just that's too distracting you know, for 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 <laughs> Yeah, man. doing they, it under a timed hard. in a timed manner, and and you know, uh, just learning to write efficiently and 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 rather fast, and and get through the beer in the time that you'll have on exam day. So, I know, yeah, exam day. Like, I mean, I haven't thought about it in a while, but you know, I vividly remember just like how intense it was. It's like we're all just like sniffing, and like you could hear like. Everyone's pen just like rapidly hitting the paper. Yeah. It, it, never yeah. experienced anything like that. I've, I've, I that. Mine was probably 15, 20 years. I can't remember anymore. But I I do distinctly remember sitting in that room. It was at, upstairs at a beer bar in Sacramento. Pangea, shout out. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, it was really, it was oddly like surreal because it, there was a lot of pressure. But then like you said, Dimitri, where you're, you're kind of like, we're just drinking beer. Like we're so sweaty about, about doing this thing. We're like, we have to make sure every, or we do it. It's like a lot of pressure. And you're like, I'm, I'm literally writing about what I taste. Like it's not that big of a deal, but it feels like it because the, because there's so much knowledge that you have to pack in mm -hmm. and you have to regurgitate it in a specific way. 
that if you don't do that, then things are kind of like, things get a little wonky. Yeah, I also remember just like, just realizing like how, dang, we're just, we're a bunch of nerds. <laughs> I mean, like, what are we doing right now? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, buddy. it's fun and, you know. It's like you're, you're, you're basically, you're taking a test to be in the lobby of like a homebrew game. You're like, I don't know, yeah. man, we're just sitting there doing our thing, man, <laughs> picking our loadout or whatever. The, the other yeah. thing too, even when I'm, when I'm proctoring and a proctor has to write, you know, even more comments than you have, than you write on the, you know, uh-huh. an examinee sheet. The, the lines are, you know, there's more lines on it. You got to fill it out so that the, the graders know what you tasted and then they can judge the examinees by what you put down. Man, the time goes by fast. It's like, yeah, it was 90 like, minutes, but that was an hour and a half. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, like, that's really like, to me, when I, when I finally was able to move up to being uh, you know a master level judge, was when I just had the confidence to write down what I perceived and not try to think about, well, is that really it? Are they tricking me? Is this a doctored beer? What's going on? And when you have enough experience to just like, it's a, it's a lot of stuff to do in 90 minutes. It really is. And when you have the confidence in your own abilities for you know smelling and tasting and mm-hmm. writing, you just write down what what's there. Uh, and that's, I, I think, one of the keys to being able to move up to higher rank. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. you know, yeah, taking the exam is just the first step because then you get in with, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. other judges, you get into competitions and you start doing it. If you have the, you know, a little bit of time on the weekends here and there when competitions mm-hmm. are held in your area. Uh, but yeah, I, that's where the education really takes off and you kind of learn how to get in your element yeah. and some of your, your strengths and weaknesses. But well, unfortunately, Dimitri just did, he didn't listen too much to my advice, got too long winded and wrote too flowery of language and they docked him, I'm sure it probably, probably failed him. I'm guessing. I don't know. (laughs) How did you you do? Wait, what? How how did you do on the exam? What did you get uh, get your score uh, back? What happened? I guess somehow I managed uh, to get like a, a decent score. Oh, that's good. Like yeah. a, what? Like what's a, a decent a, score? You know, 60, 65 or a, uh, well, 70? Well, I'm a little shy, but it was, it was 81. Hey! 81. Way to go, man. Oh, Magical. Oh, <laughs> sound effects. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 81, bro. That's awesome, man. Good job. You're, you are embarrassed, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, why? <laughs> what's up, man? You did a good job. It's a good thing. Yeah. You don't want to I be mean, too showy. You yeah, don't want to show up. I, that's not that's the thing, I guess. It's, but it's, it's, I do I do remember that it's, it's so embarrassing, but like I, I was actually putting it like the study time and stuff. I remember uh I think it was the competition my club hosted and like I guess afterwards, you know, they had like a bunch of leftover beer, so I took that and that's what I used to practice. So I was able nice. to, you know, like try a whole range of styles, you know, before going in. But that I mean, is, obviously, yeah. you can't like really practice like everything. No, you can't. It's it's hard. Yeah. But you know, most exams you'll be tasting common styles that yeah. you know, not they won't throw too many curveballs at you like a you know a crazy fruited sour with wood in it or something. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's going to be classic style like stouts yeah. or you know the Belgian beer, or, you know American styles yeah. that you know. But you know, you got to know the breadth of some of the styles. But, yeah, uh, for yeah. sure. And I'm yeah, there saying, was this, there was definitely yeah. like this one curveball, like, and it was like the the last one out of the, the flight of six. It was like an old ale, and like all of us are like, what the what the hell is an old ale? <laughs> like, I mean, like I, I've seen it like on the sheet, yeah. and like you think old and like, you know, of course old doesn't mean like literally like old, but it did taste old. I mean, it had a bunch of things wrong with it, so it was like so clouded, like with a bunch of uh, off flavors. It was kind of hard to go about. You know, writing the sheet, but yeah, those are the kind of beers you have to write a lot about. Like, oh, well, this that. It's like, where do I beer. begin? Yeah, where do I start? I, I I remember my BJCP prep class the first time, or second time, that uh, John Watson was doing that in uh, Los Altos Hills, and we had an old ale that we all thought was kind of good, but was kind of weird. And he whipped out the can afterwards. It was Steel Reserve. <laughs> oh man dude and, okay now we understand all right it was hot fermented here's some off flavors for that and here's 
but yeah, it's it's funny. Steel Reserve often stands in the place of old ale because it could be off. It could be mm-hmm. awfully hard to find old ale in the U.S. again. Absolutely. Uh, well, I will say it's it's nice that you were you know you you practiced you put in the time and then you controlled the things some of the things that you can control you know completeness of your score sheets. Yeah. I know you're were, you're were writing good complete score sheets after all that practice, hitting all the marks that that's going to impress a grader. And sometimes, you know, as a grader, when I see some, a sheet that's really complete, even if, you know, their perceptions might vary a little bit, you can tell that, okay, they're, you know, they're a good job judge. They might be a newer, someone newer that's coming in, but those perceptions, you know, either learn your weaknesses or you, you practice tasting more and you get better at, at perceiving and, and putting names to what you're tasting. And it's always a journey. I still like struggle sometimes. I'll taste it. What is that? You'll be sitting across from a judge at a table, unlike at the exam where you can't talk or, you know, look at notes. Yeah. You got the guidelines in front of you. You can discuss the beer and then it's like, oh yeah, that's soy sauce or that's, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> but that's the wood and this wood, wood yep. aged beer, but it's too much or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah we so- also had a, uh, sorry. We also had a uh, Brian's uh, Dunkelsbach in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, I threw yeah. In an exam beer into the ring there at, just nice. uh, for fun. I think. It, <laughs> and yeah. how was it? Dimitri, was it, it great? It was, you know, it was, I, it was 50 point beer. Pretty mediocre. It yeah, was, so where I went wrong, I kind of uh, graded it a little higher than it was because I, I was slightly confused because the way like the, the malt and the hops were kind of uh, interacting, it kind of, there was kind of like this grape skin, and I thought it was like, some sort of um I knew the Dunkles buck sort of had like dark Munich in it, but it was acetaldehyde, but I was kind of confused because the other beers in the flight had this clear like this is acetaldehyde, like it was this green apple, but for some reason, like in the Dunkles, it was kind of like a grape skin sort of thing. So it was kind of huh. I think it was I don't know. Yeah, I get it. It's like the flavors, uh, yeah. Pump pumpkin skin is a good way for me to describe it. Grape skin. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, like tannin adjacent it's like a you know kind of a, a tongue biting also yeah. like sensation where you get a, not you know it's, it, it really shouldn't be a mouthfeel but it like it it, it does it, it kind of grates at your tongue a little bit and it's like what is that weird taste in there oh yeah and it takes a while but yeah you'll get it more and yeah. more and more that's awesome have you done any so, competitions yet dimitri not yet uh i'm thinking maybe the california homebrew competition that's coming up Cool. As a first yeah. one. Yeah, that'll be cool, man. There's a lot of competitions here in the spring, which would be a good time to do it. If you can get the, yeah. you know, the, the Cal State in the, in the fall and then you, in the spring, there's World Cup and there's a lot of other uh, good competitions and mm-hmm. county fairs start taking off. You know, our, we do the Alameda yeah. one. I always need judges for that. So we'll, we'll hit you up and we'll try to get you in on it. Um, you know, and there's no hurry, but as you get experience, since you've reached this threshold of 81, you qualified that to to go on to uh, you know national or higher rank once you earn enough points to do so and to take the other part of the exam which is the the written exam so the beer the beer written proficiency exam is you have to have eighty or higher and you have to earn ten uh, judging points to be able to take that and it's mm-hmm. a you know five essay questions. Uh, and yeah, 90 minutes and you, and you go through and just, uh, and there's a true false section, but yeah, um, it's achievable definitely. And if you study and just keep reading, if you're curious about beer and continue brewing and continue just, you know, read as many, you know, good articles, good books as you can. Um, and, uh, yeah, don't listen to our show, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, man, what are you going to do? <laughs> have you, um, have you, ha- have you brewed at all since you've, um, sort of been studying or compiled all your knowledge or whatever. I, I, yeah. Is, is how, how has all of this, this journey that you're on, um, has that impacted your brewing at all, your home brewing at all? Oh, I'd say like, I mean, it was kind of the main reason why I wanted to, to do BJCP in the first place is to really, I guess, like hone my skill. And, you know, I, I did um, kind of realize that, you know, a bunch of my ales have had like this diacetyl problem and which got me thinking like uh you know i've been trying to look for where in my process that's sort of happening and i think it's because you know i'm not giving enough oxygen 
before I pitch and stuff like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're leaving them on yeah. the yeast long enough, but it's just still coming up anyway. Yeah. The, the tricky thing is like they're ales, but I mean, you don't really have those with that problem with ales because they're already like fermenting the yeah. 65s. Yeah. Yeah. So you're oh, but to answer it down. Yeah. To answer your question, that's like something I've been trying to tackle. Nice. And yeah, you know, whenever I go out for like a beer with my friends, I'm still doing the thing like where in my head I'm doing like the whole judging thing. See, know, that was my next question. Like, yeah, it, I think we talked it, about it last time. <clears throat> has all this oh, yeah. ruined you even more? <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. like I think the the main culprit for when I go out is, you know, you could just tell like when the the pubs or bars or whatever, like, man, they just don't clean their lines. Like, there's something <laughs> yeah. wrong. It just yeah you just get disappointed more but you know you try to <laughs> you know you try to like look past it i guess and just enjoy the beer as a, yeah and as I, a go, beer. I go back and yeah. forth um you know where I, sometimes you're like oh it's you know it's fine it's a it's a bar they're not gonna really mm-hmm. no one cares you know yeah i expect that yeah yeah but then then there was a phase where it's like well no this is my fucking money like i'm not gonna, yeah no i don't want to drink this beer if mm-hmm. it sucks like i'm not i don't need to drink beer and but then you're like well should i be, am i gonna embarrass myself or like the mm-hmm. other people and you go well, i don't really care it's just this whole like conflict so so oh. i just switched to heroin instead it's cheaper <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know you can't complain to anybody you're gonna die it's fine yeah no yeah so like the whole money thing it's like dang it there goes eight bucks but that's why I, I kind of try to avoid draft beers if i'm like at a bar or something like yeah. if i do really want a beer i'll see if there's like cans or something yeah i mean it's probably better right definitely going for like um either dive bars or like going out to like shows the concerts and shit like that you definitely like oh yeah i'll, I'll take a bottle of coors light yeah, I'll probably just over do the, a, the light uh, over the light a, a draft Sierra Nevada because, yeah. like, who knows how long it's been there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, especially go, like I stay away from like IPAs like when I'm out because I I know I'll be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, well, me yeah. too, but for different reasons. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> well, when you're in, in the right environment, when you're at a craft beer bar, and yeah, you know, who knows what they're doing? Then mm-hmm. yeah, obviously you can taste it. and They get him some special beers, and yeah. they're gonna probably taste better mm-hmm. from draft than than from the cans. Oh yeah. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it's still, it's still. I think it's still a crapshoot. I think crap beer has gone a long way, but mm-hmm. I think Dimitri's right in, in that it's still, it's still a crapshoot. It, it as much as we, as much as we want to sort of like you know, glaze the industry, it's still a crapshoot. People it's like I was drinking a, a can of craft beer the other day that I was like, this is not good. Yeah, hit or miss. Draft, like this is not good. Yeah, it's the same beer. It's mm-hmm. not good. So I, I mean, don't know. It just depends. Yeah. yeah, I've been on the run, like with um, you know, just like the domestic, like American lagers, and surprisingly, Pabst is really good, like compared yeah, to, yeah. compared to like, everyone else. Like it actually tastes like a craft American lager sometimes, like if I'm it's so fresh. <clears throat> the people in the in 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 home brewing specifically, mm-hmm. but in craft in general, I, I think we really poo poo the um, American light lagers and stuff. No, um we like had a uh course banquet a, past yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. rainier if you if you're in the pacific northwest ever you get get yourself some vitamin r dude that shit <laughs> perfect mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. we had a competition several years ago where uh the calibration beer i was on the light lager table yeah. uh and our or, or lager american lager table and our calibration beer was a tall boy of budweiser america america baby and yeah. i hadn't had budweiser in years mm. And I'll tell you what, InBev has gotten rid of whatever that horrible off flavor that I could never quite put my finger on what it is. Yeah. Budweiser always had. It was gone, and it was actually a pretty tasty beer. I was surprised. Wasn't the, wasn't the America like the stronger version of Budweiser? Didn't it might have been? Was it is? It might have been. I don't remember. Yeah. But whatever it was, I mean, we had a tall boy of America, and that was it. It was good. I, I enjoyed it. Nice. Very good. Uh, all right, Cooper, is there anything else we want to berate Dimitri for or squeeze any info out of him or uh, we're going to let him go? I was, I was, uh, he, he actually told me his score before the show. So I was only acting surprised when he told oh, me what he got, but what? I was, I was super stoked for him when I heard the news and, uh, yeah. you know, just happy to know that we, we might've helped somebody. You might've helped oh, yourself for sure. already. 
but yeah. you know, you were reaching out to people and seeking feedback and you were curious about it and you wanted mm -hmm. to become a judge and you wanted to obviously try to do well at it. So, you know, kudos to you for, for writing some good score sheets on exam day. It's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. it, it goes by really fast and you're always second guessing yourself. Oh, did I score that one too high? Oh, did I mm -hmm. miss the bad, the bad beer? And did I really call out the, the great beer as what it was or, you know, mm -hmm. too, too many, I, I psych myself out, you know, even when I'm proctoring sometimes and when I do uh -huh. the exam. And that's, that's the, that's the tough thing. That's the, to me, that's the biggest speed bump to get over is the psyching yourself out is just to learn how to trust yourself. And get out of your there. own way and judge what's there in front of you and, yep. yeah. and yep. but work with others. Now you can just judge together. And that's the funnest exactly. part. Once you, we'll exactly. see you around at some competitions and, yeah. Yeah. and maybe we'll get paired up together. You know, a lot Could of times. That'd be cool. Yeah. What Wait, was don't it? I need to shadow someone? You'll be uh, yeah. usually when new new brewers, uh, new judges. I'm sorry, come in to judge a competition. They'll often be paired by the organizer with a more experienced judge to yeah. to work together, mm -hmm. and um, that's that's a good way to learn. But yeah, yeah. you don't get shot. You th get thrown right in, man. Yep, you get thrown. Yeah, in. you don't get just to sit there and like watch. Uh, what was the worst part about the competition or the test for you? What was the hardest part and was the easiest part? Okay, the hardest part for some reason like going through the flight i kind of struggled to count like when i'm doing the final score so i, I had to like use my fingers like yeah because <laughs> if you make a bad and I had to, like double bad. i had to double check yeah yeah, Hell yeah dude don't lose points yeah yeah Damn. that happens yeah. that's just it, it, there's all the stress and you're focused on on sensory and you're just the, the part of your brain that does math yeah, is just exactly. like no i'm over here i'm taking a break by mm -hmm. the time you get through six samples too it's a yeah, moderate, drinking, dude. moderate yeah. amount of alcohol in your system well, you're like oh yes you know whenever i can't do like simple things i always i just tell myself that like well you know geniuses have a hard time with simple tasks and stuff like that so just think of it that way you're too smart to do yeah, just think about right. too much they don't know how to yes. comb their hair, tie their shoes, but they can yeah. build you a rocket, right? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. What's the what's your favorite oh. part of it? Favorite part of it? Yeah. Um it's gotta be one. I don't know. I felt like the practice paid off for sure. Nice. Yeah, like the like shout the, out uh Brian's tutoring. You had a little cough, <laughs> yeah, a little confidence com. going in. Thank you. No yeah. problem. No problem. Yeah, the, uh, the culmination oh, also, of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, that and like I had a little bit of time to like look over uh, my sheets, like after each mm -hmm. beer. Oh, okay. Which is good too. Nice. Sometimes uh, just the post uh, exam, like hanging out and talking to the proctors and the organizer. Oh, yeah. And we what did a bottle you share. Because it's like there's a bottle share, or you're at a yeah. you know, you're at somebody's house, and they're like, "Well, taste this. Let's have some good beer now." And you don't have to have <laughs> all this other stuff we had. Oh, here's what mm -hmm. this was. You know, they might show you a little bit about what yeah. they did. I won't tell you everything, but mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a fun part of the exam too for me. Uh, did you guys hang out for a while? Yeah, we did. Uh, a bunch of He's people like there. brought some. He hasn't uh, left. <laughs> they won't let it, him leave. That's funny. You know, uh, I actually dropped off some beers to to the Alameda County just right before the, the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was a random side note. <laughs> Yeah. Um, give me one piece of advice for new people taking the test soon. One piece of advice. Give me one piece of advice for everybody. Send your score sheets to Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Brian can start charging. Just uh, write a lot. Business. Yeah. <laughs> Brian I'll... at the brewing network.com. Just send physically send them to his house at <laughs> yeah. one, two, three, horny out. Need a hand. <laughs> the next the USA. trucks start backing up. Beep, beep. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome, man. Do yeah. they still do the uh, the recipe? Do they still make you write a fucking recipe out? On oh, the written exam. On the written exam? Mm, that yeah. was for me, that was oh, the they, worst. That's part that of was the hardest part. Huh. Because yeah. I couldn't, I was like, because you don't know. So you have to like be able to, it was, for mine, it was a Doppelbach. I will never forget it. I'm like, who right. the fucking God suck my ass, dude. Stop. But, like, but there's like, always you're... like the, the, the guideline <laughs> or the test things will tell you there's going to be like three possible beers they're going to ask you for a recipe for. So you just remember, just memorize the no. general, the stuff for those beers. No, see, this is, this is what, this is why I fail in life because <laughs> I go, no, 
I refuse to do that. It's stupid, so I'm not going to do it, even <laughs> though I have to do it to do the, do the thing. I'm like, no, why would I? That's I'm never going to be able to. Can you imagine on a fucking score sheet, you get a score sheet back and someone gives you a recipe for your beer? Like, I will slap you. <laughs> Please. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Take that away. Brian, take that out. Both Brian's. Take it off of the things. Okay. Next right. meeting you have for the judges. See, now I'm mad all over again 25 years ago. <laughs> Oh, man. Demetri, we'll let you split, man. We're going to take a quick break. Right, sounds good. We're going to come back. We'll probably chat yeah. a little bit in CHF or whatever, and then we're going to get out of here. Yeah. I nice think that's going to be again. Dimitri. Yeah, congrats, congrats on your uh, score sheet, man. 81. That's pretty good. The 81 kid. I appreciate yeah. it. Hey, let me know if you guys need uh, some homebrew. Always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, always. yeah absolutely. Peace. All right, brother. Cheers. Later, man. We'll take, take a quick care, break. Man. Everyone, will, uh, we'll be right back. It's Dr. Homebrew or something like that. All right, thanks for sticking around, everybody. We are back, and you know what? Uh, uh, we are not going to talk about NCHF because Brian doesn't want to talk about it. He's too embarrassed. Uh, well, it's uh, kind of a, you know, what happens guys. What happens at NCHF stays at NCHF. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm recovering yeah. from the, the slight limp that I gained there when I tripped down by the oh, lake. Oh, yeah? How did you get the limp? What's going um, on? Um, yeah, only if heartburn and diarrhea stayed wherever you got it. You know what I mean? You didn't bring that home. That's, yeah. Um, but instead, we're going to talk about Brian Shar because Brian Shar is about to go on a, uh, a judging excursion, a first time judging excursion to parts unknown. And uh, we're excited for him. Brian Shar, what are you going to be doing, buddy? I'm going to McMurdo Base. It's the South Pole in Antarctica. No, I, just, I <laughs> wish that would be kind of cool. Uh, no, I am. I've, I've judged Great American Beer Festival, GABF, before for the first round. Yeah. But in uh, about two and about a week and a half. I'll be going to Denver and judging the final round of GABF, which will be very exciting. You know, you do the first round, you do it out at uh, like, was it Louisville or wherever the BA warehouse is? And hey, I'm not too good to judge in somebody's warehouse. It's a nice, nice facility and it works out good. But I'll be right in downtown Denver at the convention center uh, and we'll be getting the uh, uh, the beers for the, uh, the the final round. So we're done Thursday afternoon and GABF starts Thursday night. So wow. I'm I'm gonna be pretty much beard out, but uh, and I'm leaving Friday anyway. It's you get to go mm-hmm. for the the whole thing, but I'm already gonna be gone from home for five days and I'm your yeah. Friday I just want to come back. They do the awards yeah. on uh, Saturday, right? Yeah, I think the awards are on yeah. Saturday. Damn. But uh, <laughs> this is uh you hear uh, my cat Sebastian. Uh, and you I, if you're on YouTube, you get to see him too. Uh, mm-hmm. But it should be it should be a lot of fun because you know the the final round we're picking you know gold silver bronze for whatever categories we get assigned to uh, to judge. Yeah, and you've never done this before, right? I've never done the final round. I've done the first final round. round. How long uh, have you been judging GABF? Uh, how long this, has it taken you? This will be my get... second time. I did. I oh, okay. Did first round two years ago, uh, and then I didn't get invited last year. So. You know, from what people had told me, oh, if you don't get invited back, it means they didn't like what you did or something. I'm like, well, okay, I had the experience and they didn't <laughs> like me or whatever. Uh, but I got the invite this year to come back for, I, I guess they're just trying to accommodate everybody, right? There's a lot of people that want to judge. Yeah, sure. And I, it's, I would think GABF is one of those pinnacle moments, you yeah. know, because the beer is yeah. going to be good. Exactly. And I, I'm curious how, how many will be judging because the first, I, I, I was saying before, uh, I think we might have been, been off air that judging the first round is grueling and fun because you're doing, you're doing like 12 beers in the morning. You're doing like 12 beers in the afternoon. Uh, you're doing, you might be doing three flights if there's like shorter flights. Uh, and you're, you're there, you're judging, you're on all day. Uh, the second day when I was there before, I went back to the room. It was like 6 p.m. I went to bed. <laughs> I was just exhausted because you're never drunk. But you're yes. kind of worn down from drinking, drinking a little bit all day, and that that'll that'll wear you down. Yeah, and I think it's that odd combination of drinking and then using your brain and having to be yes. logical and oh, yes. um, you know uh, scientific, I suppose, where yeah. you have to, and then you have to argue and make your point. Well, and, and analytical, you're, yeah, you're you're you yeah, be yeah, analytical, you. and you've got to yeah. have that. Yeah, that that soft skill that's the opposite of analytical to discuss with other people like, well, why'd you give it this? Why'd you give it that? And have that that give and take. Um, yeah. At some point, I would just be sitting there. Going, I don't fucking know, dude. Just tell me what to <laughs> score. If you don't like the score, that's fine. You tell me what you want me to put down because I don't care. I'm too tired. I can't do this. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. But it, it'll be great. It's, it's an honor to get invited. I'm excited to go. 
you know, cool. I'm I'm flying out on like a Monday. There's like a judge reception on Monday night uh, at uh, and actually it's at that place. What do they call that? That logger place in Denver where they have like the slow pour uh, mm, check beer, logger beer stuff. Yeah. Beer, beer stuff. I yeah. figured. So, I don't know. Once you said there's a judge's reception, I'm like, okay, it's got to be there. It's yeah, I, be. I never, yeah. I never actually. So when I was there before, because Louisville is like 30 miles outside of Denver. Denver's a gigantic yeah. city. Yeah. Uh, I just, I didn't have a rental car. I wasn't going to drive a rental car, having drank beer all day, to go drink oh, more dude. beer at Beerstadt and drive back. Yeah. And I'm just like, I was just too tired every night to, to go out and do that. But I, I'm excited that we're going to be like right near Beerstadt. I'll finally get a chance to go. You know, that that'll be real nice. And then we just get get to it on Tuesday morning. Nice. Well, be sure to uh take some notes. Let us know, man. I'm, yeah. I'm I'll curious try to take about some how pictures or places. something. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, for yeah. sure. All right. Well, but look, if you want to be fun. good. Yeah. If you want to be on the show and send in your beers or anything fermented for that matter, uh email Brian at the brewing network.com and we will get you on the show and we will get you hooked up, set in, and uh ready to rock and roll on this show, man. Get some feedback on your beers. And if you want some tips and tricks, even on, uh, you know, taking BGCP exams or, you know, whatever, contact Brian and, and uh, you know, like that. It'd be fun. Be a good time. Yep. Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, if you're listening live, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes with some beers to to, uh, to talk about. Uh, we're going to have a wet hop segment. It's going to be a good time. You know, it's a wet hop season. You're going to see some wet hop beers cropping up. And uh, don't be a hater on wet hop beers. I know that's the easiest thing to do, uh, but they're delicious. And, uh, you know, you can learn how to make them too. So uh, hang tight if you're listening live. And if not, go listen to something else. I don't really care. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And until next time, we'll see you.